Hello everybody, my name's Brother Neuro, aka Dick Coughlin, and today is the 20th of January, and you know, seems like there would be a lot to talk about in the news, so I figured what you need is a break from all that, so what you really want to see is watch me read and review the following, uh, the following uh, document that I found on Scribed, which is called Ten Rules for Anal Sex by Jack Morin. Uh, now, um, it does say, uh, it, Jack, Jack Morin, for those who don't know, and I'm going to assume that you don't, uh, Jack Morin, it says here, PhD, uh, uh, you know, uh, it it's put a comma after the PhD, don't know if that's right, I thought it just came after, anyway. Jack Morin, PhD, a San Francisco sex therapist and researcher, is the, another comma, I don't know why, is the author of Anal Pleasure and Health. I'm assuming that means anal health, you know, not just, um, you know, anal pleasure and health in general, because that would be, that would be really fucking weird. Um, but he's written this thing here, and I've, I've done no research in terms of, Checking out whether Jack Morin is a real person. You would think he would go by the name Dr. Jack Morin. Um, but, uh, yeah, so apparently... So, I tell what I'm, so what I'm going to do, anyway, I'm going to just go through this document and, uh, and, and uh, you know, yeah, that's it. That's this video. You know, me reviewing 10 rules for anal sex. And feel free... To, and bearing in mind the person writing this claims to be a PhD. Doesn't say what in... Let's be fair. But I but either way, I shall continue. Anal eroticism is surrounded by a powerful taboo. Yet millions of men and women, straight, gay, and bisexual, are experimenting with anal sex. Now I hate this. this you get this a lot with drug use, where people say people people always use this term. You know, when people were getting, when rock stars or movie stars were getting off their tits on drugs, they, they began experimenting. He wasn't experimenting. They were sitting there thinking, fuck me, I've got a shitload of money. What'll I do? I know, I'll get off my tits on crank and PCP and then I'll snort, I'll snort coke off of titty dancers' cleavages. That sounds like fun. Experimenting with anal sex. You know, how fucking, how romantic does that sound? The anus, comma, richly endowed with nerve endings and interconnected with the main pelvic muscles, is the closest erogenous neighbour of the genitals. And uh, he makes it sound like a fucking sitcom. The erogenous neighbour of, he spelt, misspelled neighbour as well, as well and, con and contracts rhythmically during orgasm. Did you know that? Right there. 35 years ago, Kinsey whoever the fuck they are, stated that the anal region had erotic significance for about half the population. In a survey of 100,000 Playboy readers, and how could you not trust them, 47% of the men and 61% of the women admitted to having tried anal intercourse. Now these are Playboy readers. So what percentage of the readership is made up of women? Oh yes, those are the men that read the articles. See. Yet the anal taboo inhibits most most people from thinking, talking, and learning about the sexual use of the anus. Listed here are the ten things most men and women still do not know about anal sex. So, if you fall under the Venn diagram of most men and women, apparently. You know, this one, this one's for you. So, number one, anal intercourse is the least practiced form of anal sex. Now, is it me or isn't anal intercourse and anal, aren't they the same thing? Now, if it just said form of sex, that would make sense. But 
Anal intercourse is the least practiced form. What other forms of anal sex are there? Are there forms of non-anal intercourse or anal non-intercourse? So immediately... There's a, there's a problem with this, you know, but because it, it begs the question, doesn't it? There are many ways to enjoy the anus erotically. The most common techniques include touching the anal opening while masturbating or stimulating a partner's anus during intercourse or oral sex. I, I hope you're all making notes at home. Some people enjoy the sensation of a finger, or their own, or a lover's, yes, or a complete stranger on the bus, insinuated into their anal opening and gently rotated. God, they managed to make this sound so fucking... It's so sexy, isn't it? Can you imagine this guy? Darling, I wish to insinuate the, your anus with the sensation of a finger. Gently rotated, spinning in an anti-clockwise direction. Others may prefer the insertion of a dildo or vibrator beyond the anal opening and short anal canal into the larger rectum. <laughs> Many men, including heterosexuals, yeah, you know who you are, prefer this form of penetration mm. on themselves or with there aren't many penetrate to be, to be fair men don't have as many options when it comes to holes well i suppose it depends how adventurous you are quite frankly um oral anal lovemaking is popularly known as rimming or analingus which i thought was an airline for a while the very idea disgusts some people, as it should. Yeah. Others enjoy performing it or allowing themselves to be probed in this probed. It's a fucking alien autopsy in this special way. So yeah, that's number one. Um, now, bear in mind this is ten rules for anal sex. I don't know what rule. That wasn't rule. That wasn't a rule. Correct me if I'm wrong. That wasn't a rule. That was just a statement of fact that anal sex is the least practiced form of anal sex, which is tautological, if not completely true. Yeah. Number two, anal stimulation, including intercourse, is not painful if done properly. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Sunbeam. Is not painful if done properly. No. Nope. The belief that anal stimulation, especially intercourse, has to hurt, is a persistent and dangerous myth. Just as pain anywhere in the body indicates that something is wrong, well, if, if anal, if you know, if 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 anal anal pain is wrong, I don't want to be right. So is the same true of the anal area. I love how he said that, just as pain anywhere is, is an indication that something's wrong, the same is true, as if anyone sat there thinking, you know, if I get a pain in my arm or my neck or my back, you know, that's obviously a bad thing. But I wonder if that's true of my bum hole. I wonder if the rules of pain are different for the old rusty balloon knot. Yet it can be, you know, with its high concentration of nerve endings, the anus can produce extreme agony when it is mistreated. But it will get used to it eventually if it learns to shut it. Yet it can be a source of great pleasure. When a finger, object or penis is introduced into the... Introduced. I love how also penis doesn't fall into the... Into the in, under the umbrella of object. Finger, object or penis. I love how penis is the third option. Like object. And also object is far too vague. You know. 
I mean, literally anything. A fucking, you know, yeah, you know, a, a gin bottle, a Land Rover, a fucking, you know, is introduced. Like, it's like if you go to go, you know, you know, bum hole, this is penis, say hello to each other. Introduced into the anus. Darling, I'm about to introduce your anus to my penis in the immortal words of Winston Churchill, brace yourself. The anal muscles go into spasm as if fighting off an invasion. <laughs> well, to be fair, they are being in, I mean, an invasion is happening. You know, it is a, it is a body part that is designed to, you know, get, you know, have stuff go out of it. So it makes sense that when something in defiance of evolution and God and all that is natural and holy. Pain will result if the partners do not wait for these muscles to relax. <laughs> of course, if she's got a ball gag on and you forget to tell her the safe word. Go for your life and bollocks to it. Under sufficient stress, they will eventually collapse and the pain subside. Unless further damage is done. But any pleasure afforded from this kind of activity derives mostly from the absence of discomfort. I love this guy. This guy, this guy seems a little bit judgmental to people out there who are into a bit of S&M or BDSM. Like the only pleasure you get, I would argue that actually deriving pleasure from the absence of discomfort is a lot easier. You know, simply feeling pleasure because it doesn't hurt anymore is easier to achieve. Maximum anal pleasure requires the elimination of all pain or physical trauma from the anal experience. <laughs> the anal experience. Self-protection on the part of the passive partner involves being ready to say no until he or she is ready to proceed. Self-protection, consent. Right. This is just a reminder for anyone, that any men out there, you know, before you proceed to fuck someone in the arse, make sure they're okay with it. Readiness. Readiness is a combination of physical relaxation, usually helped along by plenty of leisurely anal touching and desire. Just leisurely, just leisurely, just casual anal touching. You know, physical relaxation. Readiness is physical relaxation. Well, because doesn't the anus come into under, fall under that category of physical? Occasionally, the muscles, the <laughs> occasionally the anal muscles are relaxes. Okay, I'm not going to argue, but the passive partner is still not in the mood. I love how the person taking it up the arse is the passive partner. There is nothing passive about this, about or as you would call it, this experience. Stimulation should mount only in proportion to the degree of receptivity. What the fucking hell does that mean? In other words, if they're not up for it, this will probably this is probably going to suck. Again, was that a rule? I can't even remember what the fucking hell it was. It's not painful. Okay, that's a rule. Okay, that's a rule. I'll give them that. Let's go for number three. Number three, anal sex can be enjoyed even if it has been consistently uncomfortable in the past. Okay, you know. Suf sufficient desire alone does not necessarily guarantee pleasurable... That doesn't mean that it's going to be at any stage ever. Let's just make that clear. There's also a possibility that just because every experience you've had has been consistently, you know, extremely enjoyable, doesn't mean that the next one's going to fucking be, you know, be shite. Mm. Sufficient desire alone does not necessarily guarantee pleasurable anal sex. 
nor is an uncomfortable previous experience always the reason for lack of interest in or desire for anal sex. No, but it does fucking help. Let's be perfectly honest with that. Chronic anal, t chronic anal tension, which is one of my favourite rap groups, uh, is the most common cause of anal, chronic anal tension. Right, just unclench. Is the most common cause of being British, is the most common cause of discomfort during sex. Hemorrhoids and constipation are, <laughs> are usually a sign of this condition. I'm sorry, what kind of... You'd have to be a pretty game. I've got... Yeah, it's okay, love. I'm not a fucking grape trotter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got fucking... I've got hemorrhoids, and by the way, I haven't had a shit for four days, but go for your life, sunbeam. Tension can be relieved by touch... I am not going near some fucking pile-ridden fucking... Backed up, skanks that arsehole in a fucking. God, that's romantic, isn't it? Oh, lover, I haven't had a shit for forty for four weeks. I got fucking blood vessels hanging out. Looks like a fucking beehive. Could you just tickle me bum and tell you? Fuck that shit. An ideal time to explore the anal open. An ideal time to explore the anal opening is while taking a shower or bath. Really. Deep breathing also affects the anal muscles. Tensing the anus and letting go in, in another way of learning to, is another way of learning to relax. Brilliant, that's what I need. Just. Oh, you son of a bitch. Right, I think it stopped. There's one, there's another car alarm gone off, but it's further away, so. Where were we? Oh yes, deep breathing affecting the anal muscles. How could I have forgotten? Tensing the anus and letting go is another way to relax. Anyone who enjoys masturbation... <laughs> hey, do you mean anyone who enjoys masturbation? <laughs> might want to experiment, might want to experiment. If you're one of those people, you know, if you're one of those, those wacky people, who enjoys masturbation, you might want to experiment with some form of anal stimulation. Though he or she should stop if any discomfort occurs. I don't need you to teach me how to fucking stick something up my arse whilst wanking, my friend. I draw the line at that. There's no need for this, you know. There are some things you don't need to teach people. I'm not going to certainly going to go, oh, this, do this isn't enjoyable anymore. Best carry on. For many people, the turning point, USA, in anal sex is when they allow a partner to massage the anus with the understanding that intercourse will not be attempted. <laughs> what do you mean attempted? You mean you swear you won't put it in? You swear you... Who are these people? You swear you won't put it in? You swear to Christ. Here's an idea, girls. Keep the bloke in front of you. Don't let him go behind. Well, here's an idea. Don't don't sleep with a man who you have that little fucking trust in. Then the recipient of anal caresses, <laughs> anal caresses. That was the, the that was the other that, that was the George Michael. So the alternate version of Careless Whisper can concentrate. Time cannot hear. Erase the anal caresses of a good friend. It would have made more sense, wouldn't it? Would have seen it coming. Yeah. Can concentrate solely on this pleasure that this erogenous zone is capable of generating. I fucking hate the unnecessarily wordiness. Yeah. Number four. Two muscle rings called sphincters surround the anal opening. Each functions independently. How is that a rule? Each of them function independently. They're bit, they're, they, they can't work together. They're, bit, they're fucking renegades. They're contrarian muscle. You know. What the fuck? And what use? What use is this information? 
What am I supposed to do with this? If you insert a finger about about one half inch into your anus, one half inch into your anus, and then press your fingertip against the side, you can fi clearly feel the two sphincter muscles. I'm going to take your word on that one, bruv. Right? There is less than a quarter inch between them. Someone had to find this out, right? right? The external sphincter is the external sphincter is controlled by the central nervous system, just like the muscles of the hand, for example, which is useful because that's what you're using to test that it's there. So they can, you know, there's a bit of, you know, whereas this, you can readily tense this sphincter whenever you want. It's your fucking choice. Change is as good as a rest, my friend. The internal sphincter is quite different. Oh, yeah, a bit of a maverick there. Right? This muscle is controlled by the involuntary and autonomic, autonomic part of your nervous system, which governs functions as heartbeat and stress response, meaning you can't control it. It won't be fucking... You can't tell it what to do. The internal sphincter reflects and responds to fear and anxiety. What, so I've got a scared arsehole. Don't, don't sneak up on it. Let it know you're there. It's like approaching a, it's, it's like approaching a grizzly bear. You know? It will cause the anus to tense up automatically even if the passive partner is trying to relax. Thus, precautions about safety and comfort are essential here. Basically, you're being, you're being, you know, her, her, basically her ass is cock blocking you. Even if a person does feel comfortable during anal sex, he or she may still need to learn voluntary control over his or her. Yeah, you need to meditate to gain control of your internal sphincter, the, inter the sphincter within in order to relax it at will. You know, just like all those other involuntary bodily functions that you have complete control over. You know, like your heartbeat, you know, and blinking and breathing, you know. Doing so requires regularly inserting a finger, perhaps in the shower, yes, or on the bus. Each day, each day, and feeling the internal sphincter. Let it get to know you. Let, be, let become its friend. Offer it treats. The muscle changes spontaneously and in response to this. But so you're tricking. You are basically you are you are you are basically you know it's Stockholm syndrome. You're holding your internal sphincter hostage. In this instance, simply paying attention is more important than trying to relax. Paying attention. What, you think you're going to drift off? You're just going to casually fucking forget this one. Anyone can gradually learn to control the internal sphincter. Right, we'll have a follow-up on that one. Anyone in the comments, post a comment if you've learnt to control your anal sphincter. Anyway, that was useless. Right. So, number five, anal stimulation provides many kinds of pleasure. That's not a rule. Again, not a rule. The highest concentration of nerve endings is around the anal opening itself. A finger can, fo a finger can focus on them especially effectively. When an object or penis, or a penis-shaped object, or an object-shaped penis, is inserted beyond the anal opening into the rectum, other pleasures are involved. The outer portion of the rectum, like the vagina, has several nerve endings. The inner portion responds mostly to pressure. Mostly, mostly to pressure. So, you know, you give it... Give it Give it some homework, right? You know, give it a book report. It's got to have in for tomorrow. Right? Some people enjoy the feelings of pressure and fullness once they understand that these sensations do not presage, presage an impending bowel movement. Once they understand 
But what if they have got an impending bout? What if, what if you, you know, once you've made your way through the mountain of fucking hemorrhoids into the constipated rectum of this toothless homeless woman you've picked up, right? rectal pressure is especially important to enthusiasts of fisting. Fisting, you know, which is a form of anal sex in which several... Uh, uh, does anyone need fisting explained to them? Can you not work this out? Can you not use logical deduction here? In which several fingers, or even the entire hand and forearm, are inserted into the rectum. And sometimes the lower... What do you mean sometimes the lower... If you're up to the fucking forearm... Right? If most of your sleeve tattoo is missing, then yes, you're probably in the lower code. You could probably tickle, a, tickle, the, tickle the little fucking dangly thing at the back of their throat. At this point, you're doing a ventriloquist act. In men, the prostate, which is just beyond the rectal wall <laughs> that Mexico's going to pay for, a few inches in towards the front of the body, can be a source of pleasure when massaged by a finger an object, or a penis, or all three. Also, the lower end of the penis, or bulb, I have never heard it called that. But has anyone ever heard the lower end of the lower end of the penis, or bulb? Oh yeah, the bulb of the penis. It's not a fucking root vegetable, I wish. It is stimulated indirectly by most types of anal sex. Anal pleasure can be, be, can be psychological as well as physical. The anal taboo adds, a th adds to the thrill of the forbidden. The most common anti-anal message, it's dirty sometimes returns as a source of raunchy, sleazy excitement. Rimming enthusiasts... <laughs> I mean, I'm not, just, I'm not just into rimming. I'm what you would call an enthusiast. I'm a member of the Rimming Enthusiasts Club. Yeah. <laughs> May enjoy the feeling that they are being disgustingly and delight delightful. I don't... Other people regard the anus as a secret special... A secret special... No, they don't. Sharing it with a partner is an act of openness and giving. Yes, darling. We've reached that special time of relationship where you can do me up the shitbox. <laughs> Number six. Anal stimulation can lead to orgasm. Well, thank fuck for that! What else were we doing this for? A minority of men and women can respond orgasmically to anal sex without direct genital stimulation. I know, you know there's a lot of men out there, and you know, I'm not saying I'm not included in this, who can respond orgasmically to any kind of st stimulate, to the thought or the suggestion of stimulation without, genital, without the genitals even being touched or looked at. Any man who's ever sat on the back seat of the bus near the engine will attest to that. Women probably do so. A lot of women probably, you know, women, this is a PhD sex, this is a guy who claims to be a sex therapist and a PhD. And he's going, women probably do this through some pelvic muscle contractions, either that's got something to do with a fucking moon or something, I don't bloody know. And a small minority, even through the sheer excitement of being anally penetrated. When men experience an orgasm from anal stimulation, they tend to focus on the prostate. You know, no doubt they, will, they are also responding to indirect stimulation of the penile bulb. The penile bulb. There's a fucking... There's a horse. There's a name for a, you know, there's a, name for a horse at the Grand National. The penile bulb. Google penile bulb. Right, hold on. Penile 
bulb. No, there is actually, it is actually a, th there is actually a, th oh, I've got, I've also got a picture of an onion that's come up. Um, Healthline.com, the bulb of penis anatomy. Anatomy of a bulb of, yeah, the Wikipedia page, right? Uh, you know, I, li you know, this is my phone. I'm still deleting my search history. Right? Um, on the off chance I die. Orgasms from anal stimulation are most likely to occur when the participants become thoroughly absorbed in their sensations and fantasies. Well, fucking no! An almost certain way to prevent such a su to prevent such an orgasm, because <laughs> in case you want to, is to become determined to have one. I'm sorry. This, who are these people? Who goes into sex thinking, well, the last thing I'm going to do tonight is fucking enjoy myself? That's the guarantee. That's guaranteed way. If you want to last, if you want to last longer in bed, fellas, just go in there saying, I'm go I am going to fucking blow my load. And according to this fucking knobhead, seeking an anal orgasm will create new pressures and dis pressures and disrupt the pleasure. It must be re it must be remembered that most people require direct genital stimulation in order to climax. On the, on the other hand, a few people have an orgasm without with, only with anal stimulation. Thanks for that one. I'll make a note of that. Everyone's different, isn't they? Everyone's got a personality, isn't they? Which one are you? Tell me in the comments section. Number seven, diet contributes to the enjoyment of anal sex. Do not eat chili, for fuck's sake. Do not eat chili with sweet corn in it. If you're planning on having anal sex, sprouts and baked beans are a fucking stay away from it. Regular bowel movements are the major function of the anus and rectum. Are they really? Well, thank God for that. There must be sufficient fibre. Oh, hold on. How long does this have to go on for? How, you know, how long do you have to fucking... Am I supposed to fucking ask this? Pardon me, love, but you've got Kellogg's... Fro I see nothing but Frosties in there. You're going to have to get on mute. I want me You're going to have to eat, eat muesli, you know, for at least the next three fucking weeks. Sufficient fibre. What do, what, you know, what do you look for in a pilot, in a, in a partner? Oh, I like her to have a diet, you know, lots of roughage. In a person's diet to make, make his or her faeces soft, bulky and well-formed. Listen, if there's one thing that I'm known for, it's my bulky, soft and well-formed turds. This allows the bowel movement to, to be produced without force or effort. Forced evacuations. <laughs> Listen, mate, I'm 41. There is barely a fucking... I barely go to the toilet anymore with much more than a moment's notice. Forced evacuations irritate anal t Listen, if I'm, if I'm having to rush to the toilet every five minutes, the last thing you're on my, on my fucking, the last thing that's going to be going through my head is like, well, this is, this is buggered up our anal sex plans for tomorrow night. Fresh fruits, vegetables, whole grains, or unprocessed bran are important sources of fibre, and they're, or, and you can shove them up your ass. Number eight, different rules of hygiene apply to the vagina and rectum. You don't say. I'm pretty sure you wash both of them. What are you supposed to do? Ble you know, run through a sheep dip? Since intercourse can be vaginal or rectal, you know, the, the choice is yours, many people assume the, the, the same rules apply for the penetration of the vagina and rectum. Amateurs. Although both are lined with soft tissue, and are capable of expanding. They are radically dissimilar. Radically dissimilar. The rectum is not straight. There's, there's, 
Oh, the irony. Right. After the short anal canal, which connects the anal opening to the rectum, the rectum tilts upward to the front of the body. A, f a few inches in, good job he told me this, otherwise I'd have just snapped me knob in half. A few inches in, it curves back. Sometimes as much as 90 degrees. It, mate, it doesn't matter, mate. An erect cock goes straight, it's gonna fucking, you know, this makes no difference to how you fuck it. Then, after a few more inches, it swoops toward the front of the body once again. A person can learn about the shape of his or her rectum. I'm happy to fucking, you know, let that, you know, live in, live in ignorance of that, mate. I'm not, what am I going to do? Is that going to, am I going to share, is this going to be a thing I'm going to share with people? Oh, what shapes your rectum? This is not, this is not something, it's not going to be a deal breaker, is it? A woman's hardly going to show, you know, this is not going to be a deal. I don't want a woman to, to be using this as a fucking... As a deal breaker, if I'm talking to her in a bar. By the way, my rectum, you know, very, very. You know, I've got one. Of, I've got the least crooked, crooked rectum in this town, right? You know, the doctor told me so. You know, I don't want. You know, I don't want to fucking. I don't want to know somebody who 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 who, who cares that much about this that they're going to find this out. A person can learn about the shape of his or her rectum by gently inserting a soft object, trying different angles and bodily... But what use is this information? There are some things that even I won't post on social media. Make sure the object has a flared base. So that if you lose your grip, it won't slip in and become irretrievable. <laughs> How about this? Don't bother at all. Because there's no geezer out there with a dick that is crooked upwards and then swoops back round towards the start again. And no one cares. No one wants to know. There's no Facebook group for this. I'm going to check afterwards. Someone set one up. The rectum does not produce lubrication like the vagina. No, it but only a small amount of mucus. Boy, that's romantic, isn't it? Remember that. Next time you're, you're banging your missus in trap two. Therefore, rectal penetration always requires lubrication. Chemical additives should... Chemical additives! It's not sunny delight. Water-based lubricants are latex compatible. Well, thank fuck for that. The main function of the rectum is to act as a passageway for feces. Are you still into this? Right. But feces are not normally stored in the rectum. Are they not? There you go. I'm learning so much about the human body, except just prior to a bowel movement. Right. You know, like when, you, when you get on a roller coaster and they put you forward. You know. Yet small amounts may retain in the rectum, especially if the feces are not well formed. Yes, because if I pull my dick out and it's got shit on it, I'm going to admit the first thing I'm going to do is criticise this woman for not having. You know, I thought you look like the sort of woman who had very well formed feces. I guess I was wrong about you. No, I would, you know, call me, you know, maybe I'm a bit of an old romantic. I would just not say anything. Finish off, go to the toilet, wash it off and put it, it's, you know, say, look, it's the human body. We're none of us perfect. I've just ejaculated into this woman's ass. I think sitting here and giving her a full critique of the state of the inside of her rectum is probably a little bit unfair and a tad gauche. Number nine, anal intercourse is not necessarily an act of dominance or s and submission. Okay, the top bottom imagery associated with anal intercourse is widespread. Well, maybe for you, something. No doubt the belief that anal sex has to hurt contributes to this notion. In fact, some people are intensely excited by top bottom fantasies about anal sex. The thought that they are submitting 
to such a degrading act is a terrific thrill. And what? And you're here to? Well, they won't. Well, well after they've read this, they won't fucking want to be. They, they won't even go near it. They won't want to fuck unless they've got a hazmat suit on. Seventeen condoms <laughs> with a marigold glove on the end of it, right? However, actual, not fantasized, anal pain can lead to trouble. Isn't that part of the? Isn't that part of the fucking point? Yeah. For others, the enjoyment of anal sex is inhibited by top-bottom imagery. The idea of, surround, of surrendering control and perhaps submitting to humiliation causes immediate protective tensing of the anal muscles. Yeah. These individuals are more, are more likely to relax and enjoy themselves if they can learn to regard anal sex. Well, this is something you should really get sorted out before you get into it, before you agree to it. Anyone who agrees to this without covering this fucking, you know, with their partner, fucking deserves every, deserves what they fucking get. Number 10, anal sex can be perfectly safe, even beneficial. The taboo against anal eroticism is perpetuated by the almost universal belief among physicians that anal sex is inevitably, what do you mean, among physicians? When was this fucking survey done? Yeah, physicians. What would they know about, you know, about you know f f about the human physical? What are you talking about? What so physicians? So most physicians, you say almost universal. So that's so the vast majority of physicians believe this, and I'm supposed to ignore them. And believe you. No physical injury from anal stimulation results if both partners refuse to tolerate pain, never use force, and avoid the use of drugs. Try these poppers. God, that mate. God, this guy. I bet this this guy's a fucking riot at the fucking fetish club, isn't he? All other risks centre on sexually transmitted diseases. Each of the each of the common STDs, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes. In case you were wondering, that's his top three. What are your top three sexually transmitted diseases? Put them in the comments. Can affect the anus, intestinal parasites, bacteria, or tiny bugs are usually passed along. When fecal matter finds its way into someone's mouth or vagina, I'm going to be fucking sick. Most likely through women. How is fecal matter going to find its way into someone's vagina through rimming? What do they think? He's just wipe his mouth on her clunge before... It AIDS has complicated the matter. Oh, if you, I tell you what, it fucking has it all. I tell you what, if there's the one thing that pissed me off about the whole AIDS thing was the, was how much more complicated it made fucking, you know, it was hard and it was difficult enough to convince your missus to let you have a fucking go, but then AIDS came along. Now you've really got to fucking, you know, you've got to fucking negotiate like a motherfucker to get it. The HIV virus, you don't need to say the HIV virus, mate. Just HIV can pass from semen or blood of an infected person to the bloodstream of a partner through a tiny break in the rectal tissue during anal intercourse. You know, but that just makes it more exciting. To avoid this risk, anal intercourse and rimming should not be practiced casually. What do you mean practiced? I've never understood this use of the word. They use this term with gay people, didn't they? They say, is he a practicing homosexual? What do you mean practicing? Who would you practice on? I don't think he's practicing. I think he's gone full on. I think he's gone full pro. Right? He's not a fucking. He's not got his provisional fucking homosexuals license. Should not be practiced casually. No, only take do it fucking. You know, build up to it. In other words, don't be a. You know, don't don't be a. Don't be a skank. Don't be an anal skank. 
He's basically, you're slut shaming someone's arts here. Those who do, den those who, <laughs> those who do enjoy anal intercourse should always use a condom. Right. Rimming should always be accomplished by a latex barrier. Oh, fuck off. What is the fucking point? Of course, in a monogamous relationship with two healthy people, the risk of disease transmitted anally is reduced, but not completely and utterly eliminated. Thousands of men and women with chronic anal medical problems have restored their anal health by challenging their negative attitude. Yes, of course, it's your attitude that has caused this. This approach is indispensable for full... Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I feel fully fucking enriched by that. Thank you, Dr. Jack Morin. Fuck it, let's Google the cunt's name. Jack Morin uh, No, apparently this motherfucker does he does it yeah, yeah this motherfucker does exist. Yes, he is a doctor. I suppose I could give him the benefit of the doubt and suggest that maybe someone who doesn't speak English typed out this fucking thing. It's still shit. And you should, you know. It's still useless. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you have, please subscribe. You know, you're going to see a lot more videos like this. And, uh, you know, support me on Patreon. Make a donation via Cash App. Could do with it. Other than that, my name's Brother Neuro. Good night. May God be less. And remember, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. <laughs>